I want to ask men to envision the world they would want to see for their daughters, their granddaughters, or any girl that they may love. And let's make her five years old. And I'm asking the men in the room to envision the world you want to see for her when she's 18 years old and she's walking across that campus green, first day of college, talking to her girlfriend at home on the phone. Envision that world. And in that world, how would you want to see men acting and behaving? And when I ask men that question, and I've asked easily 100,000 men that question at this point, and men say, usually the first response is, I want them to be respectful. And I ask them to start breaking down what do they mean by respect. I want them to be caring. I want them to be nice. I want them to be gentle. I want them to look out. I want them to do the right thing. These are all the responses that men give. And what that says to me is the responses that men give are men identifying the areas that they know that we know we're falling short. Let's talk a little bit about what it means to be a man that creates this separation. You know, when I think about it, and I've spent many years thinking about it, so much of the socialization of what it means to be a man, the collective socialization of what it means to be a man is rooted in distancing ourselves from the experience of women. So men must be tough, strong, athletic, courageous. And what we view as the opposite of that is being weak. And collectively, who do we as men see as weak? Women. You know, we have this definition of manhood that's kind of wrapped in muscles. You know, it's wrapped in muscles. Men are strong, women are weak. And then we go about our business as men never, ever, ever appearing weak. And for many of us, we get weak all the time. But we don't use the word weak to define when we're weak. I'm a little tired. <laughs> Not feeling too good today. Yeah, I'm a little wore out. Oh, yeah, well, you're weak, man. You're feeling weak. <laughs> but from the time we're this big, we're socialized to remove that word from our vocabulary. Because men are strong, women are weak and we go about our business never, ever, ever appearing to be weak, distancing ourselves from the experience of women, or at least our illusion of that experience, particularly in this example, to define what it means to be a man. And it is an illusion, because you know, when you really allow yourself to think about it, we have this definition of strength that's wrapped in muscles. But when we allow ourselves to be more comprehensive, and I ask men this, if, if we, you know, let's be more comprehensive about the, about the word strength. Then they start talking about integrity, they talk about ethics, they talk about the power and the strength of sticking and staying. They talk about commitment, you know, they talk about faith. You know, men, and then, then you know, when they start rattling off the responses, they're thinking about women in their lives. When they start rattling, you know, I... I, I, you know, truth be told, I think about growing up as a boy. I grew up between Harlem and the Bronx. And, and I can even think into my adult life in, in many cases, many, many cases. I knew way more strong women than I knew strong men once I got past muscles. And most of us as men do. But we have this rigid definition that works for our, at many times, rigid definition of manhood that creates this separation. 